Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to execute an asynchronous HTTP request via Reactive Extensions. So I've talked about Reactive Extensions previously on my channel and done a little introduction on it, but I want to demonstrate more use cases for Reactive Extensions so that you can kind of get an idea of how it all clicks together and you can apply Reactive Extensions to your own application. So I figured what better use case to demonstrate than an asynchronous HTTP request because it's pretty common to have some kind of HTTP request in your application, such as hitting an API, which is exactly what we have in this demo. So I just have a simple console app here and I have this cat fact query that we can execute to get back a cat fact and then I write it out to the console. So this cat fact query, it does execute an HTTP request. So we use an HTTP client and just get a cat fact from this cat fact API. So overall, this execute method on our cat fact query represents the asynchronous HTTP request. So overall, I want to wrap this execute method with reactive extensions and as an observable. So you might be asking why, because as we can see it, it works fine. I execute the cat fact query and I write out the content, which is exactly what I want to do. Why would I want to wrap this in an observable? Well, the nice thing with observables is that there's plenty of operations that we can apply to them to transform our data, catch errors, handle retries, stuff like that. So we're gonna get into those operators, but starting off, let's get into creating our observable. So I've talked about the mindset behind reactive extensions. And the first thing we need to discover is the data source that we wanna wrap. And that's straightforward here. It's just our cat fact query. So let's create that observable. I'm gonna get rid of all this for now. And let's do observable, import that from, oh, I need to install system.reactive. Let me do that. So let's manage our NuGet packages real quick and search for system.reactive and just install that. All right, got system.reactive installed. So we should be able to import observable. There we go. So there's actually a couple ways that we could create the observable for our cat fact query, but the straightforward option here is to use from async. And this fits perfectly because we execute our cat fact query asynchronously. So let's pass in an async callback to execute our cat fact query. So we can take the cat fact query and execute that. And now we have our observable for our cat fact. So let's subscribe to this and pass in our observer here. We're just gonna represent this with callbacks. So the first callback is gonna be our own next action for our cat fact. So this is the data that we get from our observable. And I'm just gonna console write line the cat fact content. And that should be everything we need for our very basic observable and just getting our data and writing it to the console. Let me organize this onto new lines here and let's run this. So I'm going to start this up and we should see our cat fact get written to the console. There we go. So as I kind of hinted at earlier, there's really no benefit to this right now. All we've done is wrap our cat fact query in an observable rather than simply calling it directly. So now I want to get into reactive extensions operators so that we can enhance this observable and make it more valuable than just calling the query directly. So the big thing with an HTTP request is that it could fail if there's some kind of network blip. So let's just hard code this to throw an exception. So I'm just gonna hard code that up there and we're not even gonna execute the request, but just hard coding. So now our observable is gonna throw an error. And right now we don't actually do anything for errors. So let's enhance our observer and add another callback here for one error. So we'll get our error passed in and let's open this up. So the method signature that we're using is on next and on error. And this receives any exceptions from our observable. So I'm actually just gonna write that out to the console too. So let's just do a write line for our error and we'll just write out the message. So let's try this out and we should see our error message get written to the console. As we see here, the exception was thrown. And that's actually just the default error message because we didn't specify one. So it's nice that we're writing out our error message, but the assumption we're making here is that our cat fat query just randomly failed as some kind of network blip. Now, in that case, I would want to retry the HTTP request. And without observables, that would take a little bit of effort to implement. But with reactive extensions and with observables, it's quite easy. So all we have to do is add this reactive extensions operator called, you guessed it, retry. So by default, if we specify no parameters, 
it's going to retry infinitely but we can also specify a retry count so i'm going to retry three times and just to prove this is working let's head back to our cat back query and just add a little console right line and we'll just say executing and we should see this get hit multiple times as we retry our query so let's run this and let's see these retries so we retried three times but eventually after those three failures we threw the exception and we wrote that out to the console here so that's unfortunate our retries really weren't enough we retried three times but each of those failed and our exception was eventually thrown and written out to the console but maybe i don't want an error to ever be thrown to our observer so for example i don't even want my observer to have to handle the error so what we can do is we can catch this error after our three retries and provide some kind of fallback value to our observer so for that, we can use the catch operator and return a new observable for a cat fact. So in this case, I'm just gonna return an observable for some kind of default cat fact. So to create an observable that returns a single value, we can just do observable.return and we can pass in the cat fact that we wanna return. So let's instantiate this. Let me set the content and I'll just say cats are cool. So if we still throw after these three retries, then we're gonna catch the error thrown and return this default cat fact. So if we run this, we're still throwing, so we should see the default. There we go, cats are cool. So retry and catch are some of the more useful operators to use in conjunction with HTTP requests because they'll account for any HTTP errors that could happen. And actually, while we're on the topic of error handling, let's throw errors for invalid cat facts. So in this case, I'm gonna consider a cat fact invalid if it's more than 20 characters, I guess. I'm just gonna remove this hard-coded exception now because I actually wanna get a cat fact back. So first things first, I need to figure out where I wanna add this validation logic and where I wanna throw if the cat fact is invalid. So if I throw a validation error before the retries, then I'm gonna attempt to get a new cat fact if the cat fact is invalid. But if I throw after the retries, then of course I'm not gonna attempt to retry then and we'd end up just returning this default cat fact. So I think in this case, I actually wanna do my validation stuff before the retries, and if the cat fact is invalid, then we will retry. So for this validation logic, we're actually gonna put this into a select operator. So pretty common operator, just mapping our cat fact to some kind of result. So we get our cat fact passed into this callback, and here we can add our validation logic. So our validation logic, so if the cat fact content is greater than I think I was going for like 20 characters. We'll do 30 because I think these are kind of long actually. Oh, and obviously I want to get the length of the cat fat content. But if this content is too long, so over 30 characters, then I'm going to return an observable dot throw. So this observable just immediately throws an error and we can pass in the exception we want to throw. So we'll just pass in an exception and say cat fact was too long but if the cat fact is valid then we're just going to do an observable dot return and return the valid cat fact and we need to add a type to this observable dot throw so ultimately i'm trying to map this cat fact with select into an i observable for a cat fact so cat fact is the type i want to add to this observable dot throw and now we get a fat error and the issue here is that we're mapping our cat fact into an observable for a cat fact. So since we've essentially created these new inner observables here, we wanna switch to executing these observables now. So after this select, we wanna call switch and that resolves all of our errors. So we've switched to executing whatever observable we return from this select operator. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint here so that we can see this in action. Let's try this out and let's see how this validation works. So we got our first cat fact and let's see, is this over 30 characters? It is, so we should throw, but we are gonna retry. So let's see, oh, we, okay, we've already started retrying. Let's see, we got a new one. This one's definitely over 30. And yeah, we retried again. And this one, oh, I think that's over 32. So I think we're just gonna end up returning our default cat fact. Yeah, we did. Let's change this to 50. So if the cat fact is longer than 50 characters, then it'll fail validation. So let's see if we get any that pass. And we still don't have about 80 characters. And here we go. We got one to pass validation. So not sure what the sweet spot is on this length, but let's just stick with 80. So finally, looking at this observable chain that we have here, 
it's gotten pretty complex, I'd say. So one thing I want to point out is that you can definitely extract these complex operators and combinations of operators into custom operators. So we can demonstrate that. Let's add a custom operator and we're going to implement our custom operator as an extension method. So we still get this fluent feeling of combining operators. So I ultimately want to return an I observable for a cat fact. And the custom operator that I'm creating here is the validation logic for the cat fact length. So I'm going to call this validate cat fact length. So we got our method here, but this is an extension method for an I observable for a cat fact. So let's specify that. So extension methods, we have this and then the type that we're extending. So that's an I observable for a cat fact. We'll just call it observable. And now let's move our validation logic in here. I'm going to include the switch because I ultimately want to return just an I observable for a cat fact rather than the I observable for an I observable of a cat fact that we have in our select statement. So let's cut all this out, including the select and switch and paste that in our extension method. And we're going to apply these operators to the observable that's using this extension method. So let's use that observable and ultimately just return the result of adding these operators. Um, we get this error. So an extension method must be defined in a non-generic static class. So let's just throw a class here. I'll call it cat fact observable extensions. And let's just move our method into that. Of course, we need to make this class static too. Our extension method has to be static as well. There we go. That's all valid now. And finally, all of this needs to be moved before our class. So top level statements must proceed namespace and type declaration. So let's move all this up to the top here. So it should be all good now. Let's just use our extension method. So let's validate cat fact length and still not picking it up. We need to make our extension method public. Let's do that. And there we go. So we're creating our observable to execute our cat fact query. And then we call our custom observable operator, which is just an extension method to validate the cat fact length. And then we still have our retries and catches and we write out our cat fact. So let's see how this works. Should work exactly the same. There we go. We get our cat fact written, although we didn't actually see the validation happen. So let me try this again, have a breakpoint here too. And there we go. We get the validation. So we're actually going to throw this time. Let me try again. Try again. Oh, did we get a cat fact? Oh, no, we didn't. So all of them were greater than 80. And then finally, with custom operators, we could even take this as a parameter. So we could have max length as a parameter to the extension method and then use that down here. And then up where we use this operator, we could pass in the max length. So we're going to stick with 80 and this should still work too. Here we go. We hit our breakpoint and invalid cat fact, invalid cat fact invalid cat facts. Why do we always get invalid cat facts? So just to summarize, we created an observable from our asynchronous cat fact query using from async. Then I demonstrated retries so that our query would automatically execute up to three times whenever an error was hit. And then we also use catch to provide a fallback cat fact in case our query was still failing after the retries. Then I showed how we could implement validation using select. And in this case, we return new observables so we had to use switch to switch to executing these observables. And then finally, I demonstrated how you can create your own custom reactive extensions operators via extension methods. So of course, this was just the surface of ways that we could use reactive extensions with HTTP requests, but hopefully you can apply reactive extensions and these concepts to your own application, whether you're executing an HTTP request or doing some other kind of asynchronous data fetching. Finally, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.